Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. Today, we are going to be talking about a few things in regards to XRP, Ethereum, market cap and all that kind of stuff. Um, but before we jump into this video, I just want to let you guys know that we released two new posters on the Crypto Posters website. Uh, you guys could utilize the buy one get one free or buy one get one 50% off, sorry, uh, sale uh, for a limited time only um, until the end of the month. Yes, these are all designed by me and made by me. So if you guys do want to get one, uh, we just released an ADA one and also a new XRP one. We have about three XRP um, variations on here. Actually, I think four. Uh, so if you guys are, you know, interested in something like that, you guys can come over here and grab one. Uh, links will be down in the description below as well as in the comments below. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to do that. If you guys don't want to do that, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm not letting you guys know like that you need to or anything like that. But just wanted to live, give you guys a little bit of an update. So with that being said, let's move over here. So we do see um, Bitcoin tried to break out of 49.3K, just got rejected off of it. Uh, so we are seeing a little bit of a nice closing point for Bitcoin. I do think that we will most likely close over that level, see a little bit of some, you know, a little bit of relief, nothing too crazy. Um, but same with XRP. I think XRP will most likely close over a dollar fifteen to pretty much end the weekly close at a nice solid level. And I do think that that is good to see as well. Um, nothing too crazy in terms of expectations though. Like I'm not expecting Bitcoin to fly to like, you know, 55 K or anything like that just yet. Uh, I do think that we have a little bit more time until we do get to those nice key levels. But with that being said, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about this. We do see that the IMF was lying about cryptocurrency assets, basically making them equivalent to a national currency and all that stuff in terms of an inadvisable shortcut. Um, but we do see here the IMF is openly lying. Federal Reserve banks are all private. 97% of fiat is issued by private retail banks via fractional reserve lending. Uh, money issuance and policy are colluded in private, not democratically. Um, crypto is the only public asset class. And 100%, um, I think a lot of people uh, are getting steered the, long, the wrong way by these government officials and government official agencies, like even the SEC, right? The SEC coming out and blatantly lying about XRP, it, it, it's just, you know, it's telling people the wrong things, it, you know, it's delivering the wrong ideas to people and they will lose. Like a lot of people will lose out on a lot of money because a lot of people were even invested into XRP before the SEC lawsuit and now they won't even touch it. So, you know, in my opinion, um, a lot of this is all control. Uh, the, you know, they're pulling the puppet strings, if you will. And um, I just, in my opinion, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do see on a day-to-day -day basis from the government and government official, you know, organizations, you know, you really can't believe it. You can't really trust it. But we do see here the Ripple versus SEC case will be the biggest in history, not just crypto history, XRP, and this is coming from Kevin Cage. Now, obviously, I have been saying this for a very long time that this entire SEC case is not just, you know, Ripple versus SEC, right? This is the SEC versus crypto, all of crypto. I'm going to put it to you this way. Ripple has all the resources at hand to win this lawsuit. For an example, Ripple is a billion dollar plus company. They have multiple connections with massive agencies around the world. Now, just imagine if the SEC, right, sued, we'll just say Ethereum, right? Do you honestly believe that Ethereum, the entire, you know, full team behind it, would have been able to fight this case as well as Ripple has. Absolutely not. And I'm not saying that to compare the two assets or anything like that. I'm just saying Ripple has been around since 2012. They know the ins and the outs of regulations. They have been meeting with regulators all the time since 2012. They have talked to individuals around the world in regards to, you know, the BIS. I mean, they are a massive organization to be completely honest with you like ripple is a massive um company now i'm just gonna say it right now if ripple cannot win against the sec 99 percent of all cryptocurrencies in this space will not win against the sec and i say 99 uh, percent because there is a few assets out there that are fully compliant with the sec uh, they, uh, we already know about them. I've already told you guys about them. The closest one, in my opinion, would be HBAR. Um, but in my opinion, 
Ripple and XRP needs regulatory clarity and they need to win in order for crypto to thrive. If you guys are not in XRP and you guys are just supporting, you know, crypto, you should be cheering on for XRP to be completely honest with you guys. Now, in regards to that, I also want to talk to you guys about this. So we've been hearing a lot of this idea of, oh, it was just Hinman's overall, you know, opinion. It was Clayton's overall opinion. It was this, that opinion, whatever. Now, listen closely to Robert Jackson, who is the SEC commissioner during the Hinman Ethereum speech. Uh, even before I got in the commission, Jay Clayton stamped that out. And then he came forward and said, um, if you want to raise money on an ICO basis, you're almost certainly going to have to comply with the securities laws. And here's how that looks. Um, and then we started digging into the harder questions about um, how do the securities laws apply, for example, to cryptocurrencies? Um, are they likely to be securities when they're first issued or when they're decentralized? Uh, will there be a different view? Uh, and I think um, uh, Bill Hinman gave a terrific speech uh, last fall where he outlined some of those principles um, and did a good job guiding the market. Um, All right. Now, we don't have to watch the full video, but I just want to talk about what he just said. All right. And that was the idea that he did a good job guiding the market with those principles that he outlined regarding Ethereum not being an ICO security, basically, right? With their ICO listing. Isn't that comical to say the least, right? Because they did a $14 million ICO in 2014 before Ethereum was even being built fully, before anything was live, which is a clear, um, you know, validation of it being a security. And now when we talk about Hinman's speech, uh, you know, we already know that, oh, it was just his personal opinion. That's what the SEC was claiming, all that stuff, right? But we have multiple individuals from the SEC themselves, higher ups like Robert Jackson saying that it was a speech that did a good job guiding the market. It added clear validation in order of understanding the overall securities aspect and laws behind the SEC. How could this be a personal opinion? How? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below. Now, in regards to Ethereum, I want to talk to you guys about this, right? So we do see here, you know, Ethereum is well on its way to becoming a trillion dollar asset in 2021. Here is why. Now, they're just going off of the overall chart here of what happened. Um, again, they're talking about pretty much just the overall updates with Ethereum 2.0, which I, I told you guys already that like, basically just old technology at this point. Anyways, it doesn't even matter. Um, now, they're basically talking about NFTs and just use cases alone. They're talking about the DeFi uh, platforms that they're basically building on it and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of things in regards to this as well. They're also talking about um, basically Ethereum being burnt by the EIP 1559 um, update as well. Now, overall, I don't know. I mean, if it does hit $1 trillion, that's great. Um, but in regards to this, I want to talk to you guys about the coin perspective of this, right? So if you guys were here, you guys already know that XRP at one point in time was actually the number two asset in the space. It was holding the number two spot for a fairly bit of time. Now, if Ethereum hit $1 trillion, I think, honestly, I, I've been saying this for a while now, I think that XRP could hit $21. I already said, you know, we could hit $25. At $25, we have a $1.2 trillion market cap. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. Isn't that a little bit too high? How could XRP ever be worth $25? How could we get to that point? What, what, what's up with this? Uh, basically, and I'm going to tell you guys straight up, how do we get to this price? Well, it's simple. We just do the same run of 2017 and 2018. I'm not, there's nothing, you know, there's really nothing special about it. It's just the fact that we have a lot more money in this game now. We have institutional money flowing in, institutional adoption. We have a lot more utility being, you know, thriving in the space now, especially even in regards to the ODL service. There is so much money pouring in at an astronomical rate. And I know a lot of people aren't seeing it, but in regards to this, I think XRP could easily hit $25 and hit a $1.2 trillion market cap. Now, obviously, you know, we have to watch price action play out throughout the, you know, the fall into 
the winner, but I'm more so betting on the $15 to $25 range. I think that is a solid pinpoint area. Now, again, I'm not going to wait till you know we get to the top of the mountain um, because guess what? Waiting and waiting and waiting to get to one price point and it never happens, it's just not fun, right? So we don't want to get locked in our bags for another three years. Um, but overall, I do think that we could hit these massive price numbers. Um, and I even told you guys long term, we could even get to 100 to $1,000 at some point in time, especially in regards to massive utility cases coming out. But also, think about it like this. If XRP wins this lawsuit, which I have zero doubt that they won't, um, we also see a lot of their US-based clients rejoining the team, one, we see massive relistings happening. We see XRP being the only asset in this space to have true regulatory clarity. And not only that, but we also see a lot more ODL services being ramped up. We also hear that Ripple is going to be doing their um, IPO listing once they do win this lawsuit as well. There is a lot of things to take into accountability. And I think that at the end of the day, when we talk about XRP being the most scrutinized asset in this space, once they are clear, you know, and cut without, you know, pretty much having a settlement, because I've already told you guys, they do not want a settlement. A lot of people keep saying, oh, well, we want a settlement, right? We want a settlement. We want a settlement. When's the settlement? We don't want a settlement. Ripple does not want a settlement. I've said it multiple times. A settlement does not, you know, clear their name fully. They want a win. That is what they want. They want to win this SEC case and have clear cut clarity on their name, on their company, on their currency. Then they will go for the IPO listing. Then we will see the dominoes truly affect the overall price. So with that being said, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys don't more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.